edition. And welcome to the morning edition for a Friday. We earned it. I'm Carol Silva. And I'm Patty Ann Brown. The time right now is 6 o'clock. It is June 21st. And here's a look at the stories making news this morning. A suspect in the West Hampton Beach bar beating gets out of jail. A day in court for the self-confessed Zodiac killer. And it's arraignment day for two men accused of trying to assassinate Suffolk Republican officials. If you love television of yesteryear, then listen up. Christina Tiberio, who's telling us about an interesting collection. Chris? That's right, Carol. Right here in Old Westbury is a huge collection of old television shows on audio tape. Coming up, we're going to talk with the man behind that collection, and we'll listen to some of those old shows. Carol, Patty Ann? Okay, that sounds good. And taking a quick check on traffic right now. Okay. Back in two. Back in two. And coming up on News 12, the head of the Federal Reserve will remain in power. We'll have details in business. Also, Jack Parr, Merv Griffin, Ernie Kovacs, all in Old Westbury. We'll explain when we come back. It's 612. Says the move will save lives. The time right now is 618, and they're rewinding some television history in Old Westbury. That's right, they're going back to the 60s. Christina Tiberio has more. Christina? That's right, the collection here is certain to bring back a lot of memories. And behind that collection is a man named Phil Grice. He's been collecting audio tapes for years and years. Phil, tell us, um, how did you get started? How many tapes do you have? There are about 2,000 programs that I uh, collected over the years, most of which I audio recorded myself from lost television broadcasts of uh, the 1960s and 70s. I just had a love of um, taking programs off the air and uh, re-listening to them. And at that time, uh, in 1959, 60, 61, one didn't get a chance to really uh, have an opportunity to see these programs again. So what I did is I audio recorded off the air the uh, broadcasts and I save them and now 20 30 40 years later they become rare in that the video does not exist any longer and I have the uh, one remnants of those broadcasts which are the audio uh, I have some examples if you wish to listen to sure. that this is uh, a very rare broadcast because when John F Kennedy was assassinated I had been taping on the air at that time um, on NBC and I have the first bulletins of the JFK assassination, and NBC did not start recording until four minutes into their broadcast. So this is the only example of the first bulletins from the JFK assassination. Don Pardo did the uh, voiceover on that. from NBC News. In downtown Dallas, President Kennedy was shot today just as his motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed these, Mrs. Kennedy. These she cried, actual oh, bulletins, no. uh, they went over the air with a blank card, just an NBC logo. Uh, it took 10 minutes for a camera to get hot in those days, so you couldn't automatically go on the air. So a lot of what went on initially in those first minutes were just audio bulletins on television, and um, I audio recorded that. NBC started recording 70 and a half hours of material four minutes into their broadcast, and I have those first four minutes. So that's just an example of how much has been lost. Right. And you've got one more quickly that the we Gary can play. The Gary Moore show uh, that I recorded in 1961, and many of these shows are lost today. Some do exist, but uh, most of them are lost. <laughs> Again, we're in Old Westbury, and coming up next, we're going to listen to even more tapes from old television shows. Carol, Patty Ann? And just think, 20 years from now, some young reporter will be standing there saying, listen to this, News 12, way back <laughs> when. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. <laughs> coming up, we're going to give you an updated look. It was a teenage fascination, but it has become a lifelong pursuit. Phil Grice collected audio from television shows back from the 1960s, and now we can all enjoy them today. And Christina Tiberio tells us more. Christina? That's right, Patty Ann. Phil Grice collected thousands of television shows on audio from the silver age of television in the 1960s. Now, Phil, you started as a teenager. Why? What got you started? I was a teenager. My uh, mother and father had purchased for me, uh, as a gift, uh, a Webcore stereophonic uh, tape recorder, quarter inch, and that started me on the road to uh, audio recording. And being a collector all my life, it uh, transcended into television broadcast uh, programming. 
So I used to um, tape record programs in order to see them again because one didn't have the opportunity like today to be able to see things. Uh, and uh, I just started to uh, tape as many shows uh, as possible that I preferred. Uh, good examples would be uh, The Tonight Show with Jack Parr and The Dinah Shore Show, things that uh, interested me. And uh, I just continued to tape mostly in the 1960s, some in the 1970s, and amassed uh, a collection which later on became more apparent as something rare and lost. Uh, I had gone to the Museum of Television and Radio. At that time, they solicited me. I donated material at their request, and then I researched more and realized that many of the programs, 90% of which that I recorded, are not around anymore as video. So only the audio survives. Mm. And you've got some examples for I us. Got some examples. Uh, here's um, a um, Dinah Shore show. Many of them do survive, many of them don't. Here's uh, one with Bing Crosby from uh, the early 60s. It's gotta be going on. Next week at this time, Chet Huntley narrates an NBC News special in color. The problem with water is people. This is Art Linkless. What would you do if you met an old high school buddy and you couldn't situation. remember his name? Ends well, that's the kind of situation our studio contestants and guest celebrities are asked to get out of. Um, it's just a way of reliving the past. Tune in tomorrow very, night at 9.30. Um, it's interesting to go back 30, 35 years and listen to programs that Central millions of people right watched, but movie today movie uh, are totally Jones forgotten. Right. Okay, Bill Grice, thanks a lot. And when we return, we're going to hear some more from the silver age of television from the 1960s. Carol, Patty Ann? Okay. okay. It's amazing how much things have changed. Just mm -hmm. a whole different mood to it, a whole different style. Yeah, the golden age of television. So we're in a break. We're in a break, yeah. Days of television shine on in Old Westbury. Christina? That's right. You've probably heard television shows from the 1960s, but have you listened to them lately? Coming up, we're going to meet the man who's collected those old shows on audio tapes for decades. Carol, Patty Ann? Show or the Jack Parr show? Well, now you can hear some of those old television classics, right, uh, Christina Tiberio? That's right. It, uh, it certainly brings back a lot of memories when you do hear them. Phil Grice of Old Westbury has been collecting these shows on audio tape for decades. Phil, one obvious question. Why tape record television shows on audio tape? question asked many times. I had no other way of listening to a program again, and listening is the only way I was able to save uh, a program that was broadcast at that time. So I audio recorded them, and it was the one way in the 60s especially to preserve something for myself. Most programs were not rerun, and uh, those programs that were live were one-shot deals, and that was it. And it turns out that many of the shows that you have are very rare. Well, many of the shows only survive because I audio recorded them, and I have uh, only found a handful of the ones that I recorded uh, elsewhere, uh, at the Library of Congress, Museum of Television and Radio. You can go there. Um, most of what I have is not there. When you were collecting these as a teenager, did you think it would be such a rare collection? I never thought about the uh, rarity or, or the value. I just thought um, here was an opportunity to preserve something that I happen to love in terms of um, an experience watching over the year. Ironically, millions of people watched then. These programs are forgotten about today. They no longer exist. And you've got an example, a rare example for us. Here's something from uh, July 8, 1960, a Tonight Show, Jack Parr. Richard X. Now from New York, it's the Jack Parr Show with Dick Cagney, Jim Garrett, Gary Lewis, Jim Bishop, Danny Orbach, Jose Gomez in his orchestra, and you're truly the rare parents of my James Cagney on this particular program. Speed it up a little bit. And quickly, you can hear some of these excerpts on WGBB radio station at 9 p.m. on Sunday nights. Ray Gross hosts that show. Tell us about it quickly. Well, the show basically plays some of Phil's stuff, and plus it plays stuff like Fred Allen and Burns and Allen and so forth down the line. But I enjoy putting it together because, uh, frankly, it, it's something that's needed, I think. 
Uh, everything is very compact. The shows are compact. There's no spaces like television. And it's good for people who like memorabilia. It's good for people who like, uh, who, who really have lost uh, their vision and can't see. So really, we, we go to uh, people like nursing homes, hospitals, people who can enjoy these kind of shows. And it's great because you think back to the 40s when things were, you know, it was wartime and so forth. And, and it, it, there's a lot of history there. Okay, thanks again. You're welcome. We're listening to television shows from the 1960s. And when you come back, you'll hear even more shows that are rare. Carol, Patty Ann. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks. for Brings you right back. Sure does. <sighs> was born. You know, a lot of the early shows, if they were recorded at all, were recorded over. Not many of them are left, but there is a collection of early TV audio in Old Westbury. And Christina's there now. Christina. That's right. Many of the shows, television shows from the 1960s, have been erased. But Phil Grice of Old Westbury has collected them for decades. He's got thousands of them in, in his collection. Phil, tell us about the wide range that you have of these shows. Well, they uh, date back to uh, 1959. They go through the 70s. Primarily what I've done is over a number of years, seven, eight years, I've collated all of these programs that range approximately 2,000 in number, uh, 1,400 hours. And I've collated them in a catalog which uh, I call Collector's Choice as a company. And what we've done is we've taken all of the programs and we've notated them, but have added original TV Guide close-ups, original variety reviews. So you can basically go back to a nostalgic look. It's more than a, a catalog. It's like a reference guide and um, then uh, match up any show that you might want to listen to. And you started doing this when you were a teenager? Uh, I was 16, yes, and uh, that was um, in uh, late 1959. Okay, let's hear some excerpts from some of the rare There's collections. There's a program uh, that uh, came on a CBS News with Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite was doing the news only three months at this point as an anchor when he reported the death of uh, Marilyn Monroe. This is 1961. This is the evening edition of CBS News with Walter Cronkite. Brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist. It's the decongestant. A bit here. Whoops. And uh, we'll just get a little bit of him reporting. But what makes it so rare is that most um, news broadcasts prior to 1967 were never saved. Um, influence the effect of that film and or, or the way they'll react toward you. You uh, have no idea of what's going to happen. It's, it's so, okay, you know, the audience, too, on the day. Here's an Ernie Kovacs show. Uh, this was the last show he ever did, and it was prefaced by an on-air intro by the management of ABC. And uh, the show you're about to see Ernie Kovacs. was videotaped by Ernie Kovacs on December 3rd for Dutch Master. And some music uh, that intro his show all the time. And that was the Ernie Kovacs show, which was uh, tremendously popular. Many of these shows do exist, but some of the material does not, which we do have. Okay. All right, Phil Grice, thanks a lot. Again, we're in Old Westbury listening to some TV shows from the 1960s, and we still have more to come, so stay with us. Carol, Patty Ann? Okay, thanks a lot, Christina. You know, you think about it, we've got a generation or several generations of people still around who used to listen to a lot of stuff. And then we have other generations who are like, who's Walter Cronkite? <laughs> What's radio? <laughs>